Hello everyone, my name is Jason Gregerson, and this video is going to be an introduction to orthogonal projection. So what is the projection of one vector onto another vector? Well first, we're going to use some notation. We have this u hat, and that's the notation we're going to use for the projection of u onto some other vector v. And this is another way to express that as the projection of u onto v. Now we're going to start graphically and see if we can generate a formula for this projection. So graphically I can think of u projected onto v as this vector. This would represent our projection vector right here. And one way to think about it is the amount of u that points in the v direction. It's just that piece of the components of u that point in the v direction. Another way to kind of visually see this is that if I take a, you know, a mini sun and I think of it projecting its shadow directly down onto V. That resulting shadow would be this projection of U onto V. Now it's cast down in just the right way though, so that uh, this and this vector projection are perpendicular. So that's when we can think of the projection. Now let's actually calculate this piece. What is this? Well, if I think of what this line would be, that perpendicular piece, I could calculate that as u minus my projection vector. Now the other thing I need to see here is the projection vector, it points in the same direction as v. So really, it's just a scaling of the vector v. It's scaling it just right so that it has this perpendicular component to it. So another way I can write u perp as the sum multiple of my vector v. So now I have this expression for this. So what I can see is that this vector, that u minus c times v, is perpendicular to my vector v. And thus I should be able to take u minus c times v, that's minus c times v, and take the dot product of that with v, and the result should be 0. Now, if I do a little bit of algebra with this, I can see this is the same thing as u dot v minus c times v dot v equal to 0. And the goal here is just to find that right constant that will scale v accordingly to give me u perp. And so I'm just going to solve this expression for c. I'll add c times v dot v to the right hand side and I'll divide by v dot v. The result will be c is equal to u dot v divided by v dot v. And this should be an expression for c. Thus the projection of u onto v which here I've shown is just c times that vector v, is really defined to be u dot v divided by v dot v times the vector v. So this is our formula for calculating the projection of u onto v. And now once we calculate that right value, we should know that not only does this give us that projection value that gives us what u hat is, but now we're also actually able to calculate this u minus u hat. So not only does it give us the projection, but it also gives us this perpendicular piece where the sum of these two pieces actually generates u again. So what does this all mean? Well, let's look at it in terms of an example problem. I'm given some vectors in my example. I have the vector u and the vector v. And my problem is that I want to decompose u into the sum of two other vectors one that's in the direction of v, and one that's perpendicular to v. I want to decompose it such that the sum of these two vectors gives me u. So let's look at this problem. First let me sketch out what's going on here. I'm going to sketch the two-dimensional coordinate system. I'll do a quick plot, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 4, of my vector u. u looks to be this vector. And then I have the vector v, which is the vector 2, 1, which looks something like this. Now I, what I want is the sum of two vectors that will give me u. So if I think of all the multiples of v, just stealing the direction of v but not the length, then I could find some vector that would look like this plus some vector that would look like this that are perpendicular to each other and that they would sum up to the vector u. Well what is this right vector? It's just the projection. So what this question is really asking me to find the projection of u onto v and then find that other vector, u minus the projection. So I need to find those two vectors that add up to u. So now I have to do the calculations. Well, I'm trying to calculate u perp. I have my formula for that. It's u dot v 
divided by v dot v times the vector v. In this case, if we look at u dot v, that would be 3 times 2, which is 6, plus 4 times 1, which is 4. Divided by v dot v, which is 2 times 2, which is 4, plus 1 times 1. And all that times my vector v. This looks like 10 divided by 5 times that vector. 10 divided by 5 is 2, and I'm left with the vector 4, 2. Now if we just look over a picture, I maybe sketch a quick 4, 2. That does look like it fits our projection vector. So that makes sense graphically as a solution. Now the next piece I want to calculate it was my vector u minus u hat. Well, u is just the vector 3, 4 minus my new projection vector, and that would give me the vector negative 1, 2. So does that make sense here? Well, sure, I'm going negative 1 in that direction, and I'm going up about 2. So that also makes sense as that perpendicular piece. So what I've seen now is I can take u, and I can decompose it or express it as the sum of my projection vector plus this other vector. That should give me my vector u, and it does. But not only that, but these two vectors that I'm adding up to get to u they are also perpendicular. And I can quickly verify that by taking their dot product. If I take their dot product, I get the value negative 4 plus 4, which is equal to 0. So these really are two perpendicular vectors. So that's one question on my answer using the projection. I can take a vector and decompose it into these two special pieces. Now what else can I see here, though? Now if I look at my first two vectors, 3, 4, and 2, 1, those are pretty special vectors. They're not multiples of each other, so they must be linearly independent. But if I have two linearly independent vectors in R2, they must form a basis for R2. So these are two vectors that could form a basis for R2. Now if I look at the two vectors that I ended up with, the vector 4, 2, and negative 1, 2, those vectors are also linearly independent. And so they would also form a basis for R2. But what I've shown here is these two vectors are also orthogonal. So these just wouldn't be any basis, but they would be an orthogonal basis. So that tells us that using this projection, we should be able to generate an orthogonal basis for a vector space. We can also hear that as we found this new vectors, these new vectors, we haven't actually changed the span of the two vectors. We've just changed the basis. And so we can now generate an orthogonal basis for this space. So in this video, we've talked about what the projection is and how to calculate it and kind of foreshadowed a key use for it. And that concludes this video. Thank you.